Hi, Sarah here, and today I'm going to talk to you about fetal circulation, which is quite different to circulation in somebody who's been born, for a number of reasons. So I'm just going to talk about the structural differences. So here's a drawing I did earlier, to save a bit of time by cutting straight to it. And let's zoom in and have a look at the placenta, where oxygen and nutrient-rich blood from the mother um, passes into the umbilical vein, which is this one that I'm shading now, and that joins up with the inferior vena cava. I'll talk in a little bit more detail about the specifics of this later, but I want to get the basic structure down now first. So this is deoxygenated blood in the inferior vena cava, and this mixes with the oxygenated blood. So we get a kind of mixture, which I'll shade in purple. And there's a significant difference in the structure of the heart in, uh, before birth, and that's this hole between the two atria known as the foramen ovale. So I'm just showing in rough detail where the vessels go here. So I'm now going to talk in some more detail about the specific path that this blood takes in the fetal circulation. So as I mentioned previously, oxygen and nutrient-rich blood from the placenta enters the umbilical vein. And from here, it travels via the liver and this is via two different pathways. As I mentioned previously, a small proportion of the blood travels actually through the liver tissues, as it would in the hepatic portal system in a developed adult. But the liver isn't very developed at this point, so it's only necessary for a small proportion to travel through in this way. The majority of blood actually bypasses the liver via a vessel known as the ductus venosus, which is an important one to remember. And this is good because it means that oxygen and nutrient-rich blood joins straight up with the inferior vena cava and gives us this mixture, as we talked about, of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And what we want to do now is get this blood with its oxygen and with its nutrients to the tissues of the body immediately. So a small part of this blood goes via the pulmonary circulation and I'll talk in a little bit more detail slowly in a minute about this. But the key point is that we want the majority of the blood to end up going via the aorta, which explains the change in structure in the fetal heart. So here we see the majority of blood passing through the foramen ovale and into the left side of the heart before entering the aorta. And also another change in the fetal circulation is this connection here between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, and I'll talk about that in a second. So, key points, the mixed blood, which is high in oxygen and nutrients, enters the right atrium. From here, some of this blood enters the right ventricle, and it then enters the pulmonary trunk and travels via the pulmonary circulation. We got to remember though that the key thing we want to do is get the O2 and nutrients to the body as soon as possible. And in the fetus, the lungs aren't the place of gas exchange. All of the oxygen, all of the nutrients comes from the placenta. So we've already got that. We don't need to do the pulmonary circulation in order to oxygenate the blood. So the lungs in the fetus are actually full of water, uh, or fluid anyway and they're not at the site of gas exchange, like I said. However, they do need a little bit of oxygen in order to help with their development. So you can see a little bit of this oxygenated blood going into the lungs and coming out deoxygenated. So as I said, the majority of the blood passes through the foramen ovale from the right atrium into the left atrium. It then travels into the left ventricle and out through the aorta. So just labelling on here the foramen ovale, which is the connection between the right and left atrium, into the left atrium. And from here, it's then pumped out through the aorta and travels to the tissues of the body, where the oxygen and nutrients can be taken up by the cells that are respiring and growing. So any of the blood that didn't pass through the foramen ovale and instead entered the pulmonary trunk can then pass through this connection between the pulmonary vessels and the aorta that I've drawn on here. And this is called 
the ductus arteriosus. And because the blood's at quite high pressure at this point, it follows a pressure gradient and ends up entering the aorta. And this is good because we're really maximising the amount of blood that's going to bypass the pulmonary circulation and enter the systemic circulation. So we've got this nutrient-rich blood travelling down through the abdominal aorta and travelling to the rest of the body. And to complete our circulatory circuit, um, here are the iliac arteries which branch, and here's the internal iliac artery. And branching from the internal iliacs are the umbilical arteries. Now at this point they're pretty low in oxygen because they've been to all of the tissues. So these return to the placenta. And they, this, like I said, this little ring is the umbilicus, the white one. And it sort of, there's two umbilical arteries and these kind of twist all around the umbilical vein. And it travels to the placenta and drops off its waste products and then in the placenta, the, we're back to square one. The umbilical vein picks up all the good stuff. So there we have it. That's kind of a whistle-stop tour of the fetal circulatory system. If you found this useful, then please, if you haven't already, check me out on Instagram at Sarah J Clifford. Find me on Facebook at Sarah Clifford Illustration and follow me on YouTube. And also check out my website, which is www.sarahcliffordillustration.com. Thank you.